and what our first Muslims adhered to and they possessed. They implemented that and that is what made them the caliber of people that they used to be. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِرُسُلِهِمْ لَنُخْرِجَنَّكُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا فَأُوحَى إِلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ لَنُهْلِكَنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ وَلَنُسْكِنَنَّكُمُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامِي وَخَافَ وَعِيدٍ صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states and the unbelievers they said to the apostles, to the angels Surely we shall drive you out of the land. We shall exile you out of this land unless, unless you return to our religion, to our way of life. You conform with our way of life, you may stay. But if you don't, we're going to exile you. We're going to throw you out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, revealed to them most certainly we shall cause the wrongdoers to perish. And most certainly, we shall settle you in the land after them. This is for those who fear Allah's punishment, the day when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of Qiyamah. So let us then look at the fear of Allah's punishment. It's not just the fear of Allah. When we speak of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we make reference to somebody that must run away from Allah because he must fear Allah. No. It is the fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And religion, when we talk about religion, it can be described as one's guiding conscience. The religion must be your guiding conscience. And this is what a Muslim feels when he is about to do something wrong. That trepidation, when he is about to do something disobedient, or he is going to commit an evil, he feels that fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that enters his heart. And then he turns away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the quality and the conscience that has died. It is dead. It is no longer amongst us. And therefore we have lost our guide and our conscience. It means that our prayer, our prayer, our salah, if you have no conscience, you have no guide, the prayer becomes mere physical exercise. Your fasting becomes mere diet because there is nothing, nothing in the heart of the Muslim any longer in terms of the fear of Allah's punishment. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa placed his hand over his heart and he said, Pointing to his heart three times saying, this is where taqwa comes from. This is where your conscience is. This is where the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment is. It comes from the heart. If your heart is void and empty of the fear of the punishment of Allah, then we find ourselves in the state that we are today. And what is that? The condition that we are in today, violence, crime, rape, murder, drug dealing, drug abuse, gangsterism. It even overlapped where? It overlapped into personal relationships. Because if people do not have the fear of the punishment of Allah in their heart and that conduct is not there any longer, then we find gossip. Oh, something that is rife in our communities. Gossip, slandering, hypocrisy, enmity. Everything that is wrong we find happening in our communities and that is because it is void of the fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has even gone as, as far as the physical abuse, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, psychological abuse. Everything that you are doing that is wrong, it stems from that you are not conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment the day of Qiyamah. And that is why to live with that taqwa is always your guiding line. It is always your protection against doing anything evil. Then there is the raja'un fillah. Part of the divine conduct is to hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have hopes in this world. And 
we live in this present world as if there is going to be no akhir. There's going to be no year after. We even scoff and we mock at people when they talk about the year after and they talk about accountability standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the present day civilization defines what? Defines everything in terms of economics, in terms of the materialistic world and the materialistic way. Take for instance, a learner. They want to pass, they want to have good grades. To do what? To gain a certificate, nothing wrong in that. To gain a degree, nothing wrong in that. To become an academic. But the intention behind all that is to acquire what? A prestigious job and maximum wages. Therefore, the alim, the hafilth, the madrasa teacher are looked down upon because they do not possess that particular quality that they think it is really the quality that takes you through the world and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is not the characteristics of a Muslim. The Muslim character is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran. Those who recite the book of Allah, who establish this regular salah, regular prayer, spend in charity, whether it is in secret or whether it is openly, hope for the gain that will never, never, ever perish. And that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something else that we have lost in terms of the divine conduct and that is tawakkul ala Allah. We have lost our dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because to have tawakkul ala Allah is a sense and a feeling of power of our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we think when we say what is Allahu Akbar? We are not saying Allah is just great. Allah is the greatest, the most powerful. Why do you want to put your dependence in someone or something that doesn't have an iota of the power that comes from the most powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have tawakkul ala Allah on me. Make me your wakil. Put your trust in me. Take refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And strive in this world for the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you really, if we really have this divine character within us, dependence on Allah, we will know that Allah will provide for us because he will not create us and not provide for us. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us an example. And I think it is something that is common. We all know that. Where the bird leaves the nest empty stomach and he comes back in the evening with a full stomach. Where did he get his sustenance from? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the key factor here is that the bird did not sit in the nest from morning to evening and saying, oh Allah is going to provide for me. No. He went out, he went flying, he went looking for his sustenance, and he came back with a full belly. That's a lesson that we have to learn. Don't sit with your tasbih in your hand the whole day and sit on your musalla and say, Allah is going to provide for me. No. Tawakkul ala Allah means you must put the effort in as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there to look after you. My dear brothers and sisters, we must start adopting the ideology that is of our own. We cannot... We cannot depend on others who do not have the power and that does not, do not exist around us that can provide for us like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Depend on Allah, true dependence. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. We can give examples and examples and examples of people in the past, many, many years ago, even in the near, in the, in, in, in the near past, we can talk about it. Put your dependence and trust in Allah. I can stand here and speak about my personal experiences. It, it is mind-boggling, I tell you. Two years ago, four, four months of COVID suffering, then a back operation, five months, three months in hospital after three operations that I couldn't move my limbs. Today, alhamdulillah, I'm standing in front of you. For what? Through the qudra of Allah. 
through the Qudra of Allah. When I couldn't move my limbs, the only thing my wife did is to put the Quran on next to me to say that will calm him down and that's going to bring him back. My dear brothers and sisters, put your trust in Allah and, and appreciate what Allah has given you. We were at door's death and I turned around and make you appreciate life even more. Appreciate Allah even more. Your gratitude to Allah is, is bigger and greater because what Allah has blessed you with to be able to stand here again today and to share with you and to do a Jum'ah, it is really a blessing coming from my heart. My dear brothers and sisters, remember Allah says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Every single thing that Allah has created on this earth, His sustenance is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, we can give you example upon example. Today we find people think they have the ability and they have the whole sustenance in their hands and they control your life because of their sustenance that they give you. The sustenance comes from Allah. Appreciate it and share it. What is human conduct? That is all about divine conduct. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the greatest lesson we learn from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is conduct. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the Prophet, peace be upon him. The greatness of his personality and his conduct. Allah speaks about it in the Quran. We need to take the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life is an open book. And that is why he is the uswatun hasana. He is the qudwatun hasana. He is the best of exemplars of humanity, of mankind, of everything that Allah has created. And Allah says, for you who deserve and desire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy on the day of judgment and remember Allah, take your lifestyle from the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Know, understand, comprehend, feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is with you. You might say, but the Prophet is not here with me. Where is the Prophet? That statement is not for the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was alive, the sunnah, the lifestyle, the code of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is with us. It's alive with us. We need to make it alive. We must enliven it because it is there for us. We can't just take snippets out of it and say, this suits me today and that doesn't suit me today. So let me take that part today. MashaAllah, I will wear my hijab today and tomorrow I'm going out to the mall, so why must I wear my hijab tomorrow? Take what suits and take what doesn't suit. It doesn't work that way. Talk about human conduct. Human conduct is to realize that any employment that you have, that you undertake is a responsibility, a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah is going to call you to account for your employment that you have been given, how did you conduct yourself in that employment? Did you steal from the time of your employer? No. Did you look after your job that you had? Did you fulfill every detail that the Prophet ﷺ has given you? Sincerity and loyalty is part of our human conduct that we have lost. Part of our good and excellent conduct. A lot of people speak about it. Yes, we talk about sincerity, we talk about loyalty, but then hardly anybody is practicing it. Islam is not lip service. <laughs> Over 21 times in the Quran. <laughs> you can't just say, I believe in Allah, and you do nothing in accordance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. It is about belief. It is about the understanding coming from the heart and the mind and to implement what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Amal salihat Loyalty and sincerity. And we find ourselves humiliated today. We get humiliated because our loyalty and sincerity has gone out of us. We find the idol worshipper, 
The cow worshipper. They're doing with our Muslims what they want to do because we do not have sincerity and loyalty towards one another anymore. We show more loyalty and sincerity to a kafir and a non-Muslim than what we show to our own Muslim brothers and sisters. That is our downfall. That is our detriment. That is where we are heading for. We're looking at what happens in the, in the world today. We talk about there is India, there is Kashmir, there is Pakistan, there is Palestine. May Allah protect those that suffered the floods in Pakistan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring ease to them. And wherever there is difficulty, the Palestinians, we find people being exiled from their homes. They are being murdered. They are being butchered. Muslims cannot stand together to walk over a dot that is on the map. And that is Israel, just to walk over them. If the Muslim brothers and sisters just in the surrounding areas unite and they are sincere and they are loyal, they will walk over them and take back what belongs to the Muslims. And that is Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. We have to teach our children the basis of their aqidah, the basis of their belief. We should teach our children what is excellent conduct divine and human conduct. And therefore we can mold their character to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be. The Quran. The character of the Quran. The character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A very simple, simple statement. When they went to Lady Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, what is the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Give us in a nutshell, how was he? Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was the Quran. That was it. And if we can't open the Quran and learn the character from the Quran and from the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu then we are in a position where we are learning our character from the televisions. We are learning it from YouTube. We are learning it from, from Instagram. We are learning it from Facebook. We are learning it from outside world there, from the people who are not Muslims, who do not have the character that Islam teaches us because our children are learning it from them. And they think what they're learning from the Western world, everything that they portray and bring to us is right. My dear brothers and sisters, learn the good from the Western world. Don't learn the bad from them. There is science, there is technology that we can learn. And there is nothing wrong in learning those things from them to become good people and to become productive people. But learn what is good. Islam wants us to develop good character. Islam wants us to develop honor, dignity. Islam wants us to, to develop that greatness of character between ourselves, respect for one another. Respect one another. Do not look at one another with an eye that is judgmental, that wants to judge one another all the time. Look in the mirror and be judgmental. Judge yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge you. Before the day of Qiyamah, every night before you go and sleep, my dear brothers and sisters, ask yourself, how is my heart? Is my heart pure of grudge? Is my heart pure of hatred? Is my heart, heart pure of jealousy towards my fellow being? There is so much of that happening today. Where is the beautiful character of Islam? Go and sleep with a pure heart. Because that is is your savior the day of Qiyamah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ You come in front of Allah with a pure heart. That is your savior the day of Qiyamah. To have a pure heart. To have good character towards one another. To respect one another. To talk to one another with dignity. And my dear brothers and sisters, I ask you very humbly, leave out the swear words. You know, everything that come out nowadays that we do not like and we want to raise our voice in the swear word, come with it. Leave those things out. When we speak, let us speak with words that is comforting, that is beautiful, that people will take to and they will respect it at all times. That is a sublime character that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And my dear brothers and sisters, we find ourselves confronted today with the corrosion of this beautiful human conduct that Islam came with. We readily, as I said, we readily adopt the character of the Western world. But we should also then be ready to adopt the character of Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Our religion, this beautiful religion of Islam, also fights against privileges that are not earned. We must earn our privileges because it is a religion of action, it's a religion of striving and hard work. We should look inwards, look inwards, take a good look at ourselves. That introspective is important. And after we have noted our shortcomings, and I emphasize the point, after we have noted our shortcomings, we look at others' shortcomings. We point fingers at others. This one is doing this wrong. That one is doing that wrong. But after we find our shortcomings, that is the time when we need to put them right. Put them right and say, that is my shortcomings, and I will put that right because ultimately, I'm going to be answerable by Allah for what I did, not what Abdullah did. Not what Ihsan did, not what Muhammad did. No, I'm going to be answerable for what I did when I stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then only, and only then, can we as Muslims proclaim to the world that we are the bearers of good conduct. You know, if I ask you this question now, where do you think you will stand? How close will you be to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the day of Qiyamah. May Allah grant us to drink from the hold of Muhammad وسلم, from his holy hands. And you might say, the one prays five times, ten times a day. He reads the Quran every day. He goes through khatams and khatams in during Ramadan. He fasts more than the months of Ramadan. He fasts other times. He goes on Hajj how many years if after year? He goes on Umrah. All that, all that does not come close to a person's character, your character will bring you closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, including that with your character. It does not help if you have a bad character, but you want to read the Quran the whole day. You want to make salah 10 times a day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a statement and a profounding one for all of us. أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَنْزِلَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةً أَحَاسِينُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا those who will be closest to me the day of Qiyamah. Imagine, here you're sitting and there's Rasulullah Sallallahu In his proximity, in his area, you're sitting there and you're sitting in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Those who are closest to me the day of Qiyamah are those who have the best and the most excellent character. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us that, inshallah. Grant us all hidayah and tawfiq, inshallah, so that we can become the true people of character and present it to the world in our actions, not by our speeches alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all those that have passed on a high place in Jannah, inshallah. For those who are suffering in the world, may Allah bring ease to them. For those that are in difficulty, may Allah make it easy for them. And for those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them complete, complete shifa, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan for having me here today and lending me your ears and attentively listening to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all so that we can all, I myself, learn from the few words that we have shared today. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We say Jazakallah khairan to Sheikh Muhammad Murad for that beautiful reminder to all of us that we should not be living our lives the way society deems it, but instead as Muslims, we should all aspire to live our lives as Allah has deemed it, as He is verily our Creator. We say first of all, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks is due to Allah that Sheikh Murad was able to be here today and gave a speech at such short notice. We also say, Shukran to Sheikh, and may Allah grant Sheikh many more years filled with strength and barakah, inshallah. There are just two short announcements uh, we make to our, for our former manager of Masjid al Furqan, Mr. Kasim Bayat, who sadly passed, ago one year ago, passed away one year ago. We ask Allah on this blessed day of Jumu'ah to grant him Jannah to Firdaus. Amen. We also like to make to our for one of our former graduates of Islamic College, Hafiz Naweed Bandika, who is currently in hospital. May Allah grant him complete shifa, inshallah, amen. Uh, today, the Islamic College has the honor of officiating the Jumu'ah. The first adhan will be made by Abdullah Palika of grade 10. 
and the second adhan will be made by Adam Zotenberg, who is a matriculant at Islamic College. Uh, we just ask the Musallis to please stand and fill up any gaps, and to continue filling the gaps during the adhan so that there is a minimal delay between the khutbah and the salah. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah khairan. And I just need to add, uh, while the people are getting ready, inshallah, and uh, just to say unto Sheikh, after a long stay in hospital, after COVID, after a couple of operations, after being unable to attend Jum'ah ah for many, many sessions in a row, Alhamdulillah, we are honored to have Sheikh here with us, Alhamdulillah. If the Masallis can recall, we have made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Sheikh Shifa, uh, success in the operations. And Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta ta Sheikh is here with us, Alhamdulillah, for the first Jum'ah after many times. Alhamdulillah, we are, indeed, we are honored to have Sheikh with us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Sheikh many more uh, Jum'ahs to perform here and many in, in, everywhere else, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh. Allah grant complete shifa. Amin ya rabbal alameen. And just one request to the musallis, those who are taking wudu at the masjid, to please uh, use the roller towels, use it sparingly, insha'Allah, and try to do the minimum waste on the floors in the wudu hana, insha'Allah, and try to, uh, when you're completed with the wudu and use the roller towel, please, there's a bin in the, in the wudu hana, please uh, use the bin, insha'Allah, and not the floors. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala wa khairatuh. Fadda, Sheikh. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, I shall do Allah, Just make sure that we, before we perform the Sunnah Salah, inshallah, try to fill the gaps now already, inshallah.
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فيا عباد الله تخلقوا بأخلاق المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فكان خلقه صلى الله عليه وسلم القرآن ولذلك يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم فاتقوا الله عباد الله واعلموا يا عباد الله أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد قال أقربكم مني منزلة يوم القيامة أحاسينكم أخلاقا أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا نفعن الله وإياكم بالقرآن الكريم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم الحمد لله كما يجب علينا من حمده وتعظيمه ونشكره سبحانه على إحسانه وإنعامه وتكريمه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن نزغات الشيطان وتوهيمه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى وأطيعوه فإن طاعته أقوم وأقوى وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واحذروا أسباب سخط الجبار فإن أجسامكم على النار لا تقوى ثم اعلموا أن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد قال في كتابه العزيز إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد صاحب الوجه الأنور والجبين الأزهر وارض اللهم عن أصحابه أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين 
وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين واجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا واصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Can we straighten the rows, Mufadlik? Fill all the gaps. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح لا حول ولا قوة إلا الصلاة برقابة الصلاة الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استقيم واستوي اعتدلوا ويرحمنا ويرحمكم الله اللهم أحسن وخوفنا بين يديك الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين كان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما 
تحيتهم يوم يلقونه سلام وعد لهم أجرا كريما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين بأن لهم من الله فضلا كبيرا ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين ودع أذاهم وتوكل على الله وكفى بالله وكيلا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليه ونسلك يا رب توبة والمغفرة والنداية لنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته 
ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حقا إلا أعليته ولا باطلا إلا أزهقته ولا مجاهدا في سبيلك إلا نصرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا أعنتنا على قضائها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين